I went through a big battle for many years of, God, are you calling me to the church or are you calling me to the world? When I didn't understand kingdom, okay. and, um, and so I had this fight in me. Who are you calling me to? Okay, you're calling me to coach people. You're calling me to speak. Am I speaking to the church? Am I speaking to the world? What is it? And this big fight of not understanding that the kingdom is the narrow road in between. Tonight I feel a stirring in my heart that I can't contain. It's not the left or the right, it's just the narrow road. And so about three and a half years ago, that really hit me. And when that hit me, everything sped up for me, you know? And uh, so frustration led me to this point, a lot of frustration, because I felt like I could, I was a youth pastor for four years, so I felt like I could get into the church world, you know? But then at the same time, I had this passion for the youth of our nation. We have okay. one of the highest youth suicide rates. Mm, and uh, there are things that? that I'm planning, uh, things that I know I'm going to be involved in. And so I was like, I could go here. I could go in terms of like, motivational speaking. I could go down that road, you know. And, um, and it took a while for God to be able to show me, no, you're going to walk the kingdom. It's not this or that. It's both, like Pedro says, you know, it's not this or that. It's not um, or it's and, you know, and I started to see Fuse, Fuse Life. Like I had named my business Fuse Fit and uh, then we had Fuse Life and I started to see the fusion that the kingdom is a realm within the realm. Wow. You know, it's not left or right. It's a realm within the, the realm. And, uh, and that really fast tracked me when I started to understand that, you know. Yeah. Wow. That's huge. That's huge. And, and, and uh, so for the audience that's watching right now, with um, Joseph, we have the podcast, we got the book, and tell us, Joseph, do we got personal training available? And, and I'm not just talking about the physical, but like the, you, you didn't use the word life coach. What was the phrase you used again? I'm sorry. Uh, human optimizer. Human optimizer. So do I have to be in New Zealand to be optimized by you? Are we able to have Zoom meetings like this or, you know, whatever platform it is, right? And you could be anywhere in the world and connect with the Joseph Wilson. Yeah, I mean, so I've got clients, um, some business owners from America, and then, you know, one is just um, a single mom who's stepping into a new season of her life. It's like extremes, you know? And um, so the coaching aspect for me is really to do with the operating system. I'm very interested in helping people develop a good operating system because when do you, once you have a good operating system, any application can work on it. And wow. most people, they, they train you in tactics and strategies and applications, but they're not paying attention to your operating system or your lack of operating system. So when I first started coaching, my first business coach never dealt with the operating system. And he was giving me all these tactics and strategies that are great. But because my operating system hadn't upgraded to that place, I couldn't function in some of that. Wow. And I see some people get results, but I saw a lot of people didn't get results. And here's the crazy thing is marketing, when it's done online, is all done on results and it almost doesn't care about your operating system. You'll wow. never hear these tacticians or strategists address your operating system because for them it is, let my ad see 100 people and if 10 people buy my product, I win, right? But if you ask them the question, out of the 10 people who bought your product, how many actually are successful? We don't care. Why should we care? That's not my role. You see what I mean? And wow. that began a real frustration for me of well, why, why is it that in most churches, 20% of people do all the work and 80% just sit there? Why is it that when you buy courses, um, most people, like the statistics for people that buy online courses that are not done directly with a coach, just a course that you do on your own, the statistics are crazy. I think it's like 80 or 90% of people don't even do the course, you know, but they buy it. Yeah. And I started to go into the importance of the operating system. And that's where on some of my coaching calls, like this morning, I was uh, on a call with a single mom from New Zealand, you know, who lives in a different part of New Zealand. And the call was all about her past. The call was all about uh, her relationship with certain family members, you see? And, and then uh, yesterday, my call was with a businessman who's married, he has three sons, a fourth kid on the way. And um, you know, our call is on business strategy, on how he's making his decisions. Because the operating system 
it flows into everything you're doing, you know? And so that's kind of a big part for me as the operating system. Wow, that's huge. You just blew my mind again, because thinking about it, like in the book of Revelations, you got the angel. It says, come higher, right? And so mm -hmm. oftentimes we can be in an environment where you're part of a think tank or you're just around people that are go-getters, right? But there's something, even though you're there, you're inspired and you feel the, it's almost like they have a, a, a you know, we hear Kirby talk about this a lot, a frequency, right? They have something in them that draws you to want to be with them in the trenches with them and, and, and kind of be at their level. But there's something up here that might not be clicking, something here in the heart that's not clicking, right? And it's like the operating system needs to change because once that operating system changes, then all of a sudden these things are going to click, you know what I mean? To, to have a lifestyle change, whether it's with schedule or just practical daily habits, things like that, right? It's going to come it's going to be like an easy, okay, I just got to do this, this, and this, and then it happens, right? Where you're not sitting around like, oh, I want it so much, I just, I can't seem to get there. No matter how hard I try, I'm just kind of, you know, treading mud while I'm trying to move forward. That's what I'm hearing you say anyway. Yeah, yeah, and, um, and you can't necessarily skip the upgrades. Like, someone like a Kirby has become Kirby because of repeat upgrades. He didn't just go from one day and, you know, waited five years and then, boom, got this upgrade. No, there were repeat choices, repeat upgrades, because as you upgrade, you start to learn the new interface. You can't skip it. You learn the new interface. You learn the few changes that happen at this upgrade. And then wow. a few more changes, a few more changes. And before you know it, five steps in, you're in a complete different interface. And yeah. someone like who's five steps behind cannot understand that. And even though when I say to you, this program works, I'm telling you the truth, but I don't consider that your operating system cannot handle this program. Wow. And now suddenly the program that works for everybody is not the right program for you. But you won't hear people talk about this, you know. And that's where I've kind of come into this place of, hey, do you understand your operating system? Let's forget about all your tactics and strategies. Do you understand like, what drives you? What are your motivations? What's the internal talk that goes on? Where's your heart posture? These things matter. How do you process theology? You know, what's your theology on God? Is he a good father or is he not? Do you really believe he's a good father? You know, and then I've started to see that people, they'll sing, you're a good, good father. But you took my mom, you know, because mom died last year. You took my job. And they have all these confusions in them that stops them from stepping into what God has. And now they're trying to grab this upgrade for which their operating system has no basis. Wow. No foundation. And they're going to keep trying and keep failing. And it is going to further reinforce the issue they have with God, which they don't want to deal with. Wow. You know? And so that's where my coaching, the way that God's called me to build this out, is like a bridge that we're all on a bridge journey. And uh, it's important to know where you are on the bridge. So the way I say it is the ultimate point that we all want to get to is the Romans 8.29. It's the likeness of Christ that we manifest him on the earth. So like this is the ultimate. There is no greater um, thing you can have on the earth than to be like Jesus, like the ultimate manifestation. And we're all on this bridge, you know, from pre-believer all the way to, you know, I just began believing to walking this journey, you know. And uh, as I understood the bridge, then I understood where I fit on the bridge and, I started to be able to respect everybody wherever they are on the bridge instead of thinking that they are lesser than me because they're not where I am or they're more than me because they seem to be further. All of that didn't even exist anymore because this was just a child growing up, maturing with his dad. You know, like you'll never hear me yelling at my five-year-old that, oh, it's such a shame you're five, right? You'll never hear me embarrassing my five-year-old for being five. That's just where she is. And as she matures, she will mature. And uh, that started to change my whole paradigm of walking with God, you know, and how it affects everything we do. Wow. And um, I, I believe that that was one of the biggest things that happened for me is understanding the bridge. Wow. Wow. You're just blowing my mind in so many ways. Yeah, that's wow. Well, my friend, I think we are at a time limit here. So um, anyway, it's been so amazing having you. I'm definitely going to have up the contact information that you provide here so they know how to reach out to you. We're going to have a link for your book through Amazon. 
Um, we're also going to, um, you know, have links to like your Facebook, your YouTube page and stuff like that. I want everybody to be able to reach out to you, uh, you know, by all the necessary means. Um, but my question is, what advice would you give a new or soon to be kingdom of God entrepreneur? Let's say they started out or they're just in a place where they're just getting their feet wet. What advice would you give to that person? And so I'm glad you asked me that question because I was going to ask you if I could answer that anyway, <laughs> just quickly, because I think that's the real reason I'm on here. So if you're listening to me and you just started a business, I want to tell you something. Your business, if you connect your heart to the kingdom of God and let your business be an expression of that, it will move in ways that will blow your mind. If, in fact, it won't just blow your mind. It will blow all earthly comparisons. It will blow them out of the water. When you understand that your business, you're a son first, you're an entrepreneur second. If you can understand that, that being an entrepreneur is just an expression, it's something that you do as a son, then you will have access to the greatest CEO, business director, inventor, pioneer, extraordinaire in the father, in your father. If you are willing to connect your business to the kingdom and not to your kingdom, not to earthly things, then everything changes. You are no longer bound to the rules of the earth. So because it's your first year, you don't have to take a loss. Because it's your first year, you don't have to have a small year. Because it's your first year. And everything that they say in Babylonian principles do not apply to you anymore. Isaac sowed in a land of famine because he was not in this system. Yep. If you can understand what I'm saying, you might shift products in six months and every product you make will take off, will go nuts. But here's the other thing. If you connect to the kingdom, God may use your first five years of business to train you. See, one of the things that God does is uses money on the earth, earthly riches to train us for spiritual riches. And he might use this to train you, yep. you know? And so your heart motive is going to be the most important thing. And when your heart is like the heart of your father, you will never lack. You will never lack. Mm -hmm. So for eight years, um, for the first six years of my fitness business, he didn't let me make decisions like I would like to make to expand my business. He never let me. That business, now when I look back, I can see that was my training ground. But at that time, I had lots of frustration because he wouldn't let me make some decisions that could have made me quick money because he was maturing me in walking in union with him. And so that's my advice to you. If you are about to be an entrepreneur or if you are an entrepreneur, make sure you are connecting everything you're doing to the kingdom of God and it will have a life force that is above anything that the earth can produce. And so I just want to wish you all the best and bless you in whatever you're about to do. Wow. Powerful. You blew my, you just keep blowing my mind, Joe. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. It's, it's so easy, man. I'm just even hearing you think, saying what you're saying. There's something profound about this idea that I am connected to the creator of all creation. Right. And my wisdom comes from that person and my personality. It's so easy to, uh, to surround myself with the best people in, in whatever sphere they're in. Right. And it's like, I'm always looking for examples of what the best looks like, but what, what I'm limiting myself in is I, I'm taking the human element, trying to find that gold standard. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. Totally. And so how about I set that aside and let God direct me? And of course, those people are going to come along that are going to be your, your, your Pauls and your Barnabases, the people that are going to be the experts, right, in, in the silk and, and, and in creating the Ark of the Covenant, right? Those are people who are experts in that field, right? But if my goal is to only learn from the human, uh, you know, what do you call it, uh, avatar, so to speak, of, of greatness in whatever area, then it's taking my eyes off Jesus and putting it on man. And uh, wow, that's profound. And when you live from that place, you will never step into original intent because wow. now you have made someone else your standard. But your yep. original intent is the Father is your standard. Jesus is your standard. Holy Spirit is your standard. And so you are created to, to do things that have never been done before. 
even if you're in the same industry as me, you'll do it in a way that I could never do it. That's your real identity, you know. You talked about your thumbprint, you talked about the swirls in your eyes, and this is one of the things I share with people, like even your lip print, your toe print, is so unique. There is nobody like you. And God is constantly trying to show us, listen, there's no one like you. Yes, learn from other people. They're tutors and guides and they'll do things in your life. But the real flavor you carry does not exist outside of you. And as you become comfortable in the union, you become comfortable in the flavor, you see. And the more comfortable you are in this union, you don't mind. Because when you are a unique flavor, some like you, some don't like you, some are not sure about you, and you don't mind because you're so comfortable in the union. And that's why I keep coming back to that place of know who you are, know whose you are, and out of that, everything will flow, including being an entrepreneur. Wow, that's huge. Wow, well, thank you, sir. Um, are you willing to pray us out and pray for our audience that God would open their eyes however he intends? Yeah, well, uh, thank you, Papa. Uh, Father, I just thank you. I thank you for Stephen. I thank you for what he's doing. I thank you for what he's stepping into. And I just speak a blessing over him and every person that listens to this podcast. I speak a blessing. I release encounters, divine encounters of ideas, of new ways of thinking, new formulas, new strategies, new tactics. I release all of that from heaven. But most importantly, Father, I pray that hearts will be opened to understanding union with you, to understanding oneness with you. And as they embrace that union and oneness, everything else is going to be seamless. Everything else is going to flow from that place. And I just speak a blessing over every person. Amen. Amen. Mr. Joseph Wilson, thank you so much for joining, joining us all the way from the other side of the world. It's such an honor and a blessing to have you. And, uh, you know, I hope we can have more of these conversations in the future because you are just, uh, you, you have that strength and that anointing on you that I really believe your message is what the world needs right now. That, that's huge. Thank so, you. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And I'm excited for everything you're doing. So it's awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this episode of the KOG Entrepreneur Show. Again, I'm Stephen Harris, and I want to remind you all to remember that the kingdom of God is within you always. God bless, and see you all next time. Tonight I feel a stirring in my heart that I can't contain.